Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. The City Council passed a resolution celebrating the World Series this week and the trophy made a rare public appearance for the Council and employees. And so we'll continue to remember uh, the fundamental practices that the Royals played, those thrilling comebacks and uh, their refusal to quit, despite when the score and or situation was low. The Royals taught us a whole lot, and we are certainly excited about it. And congratulations to our Kansas City Royals for winning the 2015 uh, World Series Championship. I do want to say two things. One is I know the city played such a great part in what was one of the best days of all of our lives that were lucky enough to be in Kansas City on Parade Day. 800,000 Royals fans uh, parading into Kansas City in a celebration unlike any other in any other city that has uh, won a championship. It was a truly, truly special day. And what's in front of us right here, as I've taken it around over the course of the last six weeks and looking forward to taking it around for many more weeks to come, this is Kansas City's trophy. This represents Kansas City. It's a world-class city. I'm a proud to call it home. This is Kansas City's World Championship trophy. It resides at Kauffman Stadium. We're proud to take care of it, but I'll say it again forevermore, this is Kansas City's trophy. It belongs to all of us. Thank you guys for having us. Our world champion city workers also had a chance to take a photo with the trophy. Priority went to those who had participated in the royal celebration, such as the street sweepers and police and fire personnel. It's the season for fellowship, friends, family, and of course, food. The health department wants to remind residents that after we spend that great time together sharing meals with our loved ones, it's important to make sure that you promptly refrigerate any leftovers. So it's often said that between Thanksgiving and New Year's, we may have more foodborne illness than almost the whole rest of the year. And why is that? It's because people are traveling and getting together producing larger amounts of food than they normally would fix in their kitchen, having leftovers that may sit out too long because people are enjoying themselves and talking but not getting the food back. So really recommend for folks to, when the meal is done, get together and make it part of the social event of the meal is putting everything back in and getting it into the refrigerator, but in some cases, it's too much even for that refrigerator to cool down well without actually storing it and icing it down or putting it into the deep freeze first for a while and getting the temperature down before you put it into the refrigerator. So you really can protect yourselves by cooling things down much more rapidly. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to give you a glimpse of some of the upcoming events taking place for your family at City Facilities during this winter season. Mark your calendar for the annual 2016 Mid-America RV Show coming to Bartle Hall January 14th through the 17th. The Mid-America RV Show is the largest consumer show dedicated to the RVing lifestyle and everything associated with it. RVing enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market. Whether you are on the market for a motorhome, custom motor coach, or pop-up camper, you will find it at the Mid-America RV Show. For additional information, go to gsevents.com. Your outdoor adventure continues with four days of boating and outdoor fun at the Kansas City Boat and Sports Show from January 21st through January 24th. Whether you're an avid outdoorsman or just looking for a way to escape winter for the day, this is your show. This annual four-day event turns Bartle Hall into a one-stop marketplace for outdoor fun with activities for all ages. For additional information, go to KansasCitySportsShow.com. Fans can celebrate baseball in a big league way at the Royals Fan Fest at Kansas City Convention Center's Bartle Hall. Meet your favorite World Series team at the autograph sessions featuring current and former Royals. Enjoy the interactive games for fans of all ages. 
main stage programs, and more. The club's 2015 Major League Award winners will also be recognized during the event. A portion of the proceeds will again benefit Royal Charities. For additional information, go to royals.com slash fanfest. These are just a few of the many events the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offers our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. A lot of rich history stands on this campus. To think of today that we are honoring not only Leon Jordan, but opening up a police station and also a crime lab that really has the community in mind and not just a, a way for the police uh, to go out and police the community, but they're basically, they're really serving the community. I've been in this community for almost 29 years, and I remember when the community was real infested by drugs. We've been working so strong in the community for this uh, police station to be here. It means just so much. We're so excited uh, that uh, I said before, I still think I'm dreaming and I got to wake up from the dream. I only live six houses from here when this project came about and I was laid off in between jobs, really didn't have any money. The place where I lived at was about to go up for taxes. I made contact with the right people. They put me in touch with different people and different companies. I'm in the union now. I've been working with the same company for the last three years and I have benefits. It created possibilities for myself and others. The most exciting thing I see is, is the camaraderie again that's reoccurring. People, people are talking to each other. Everybody is smiling at each other. The point I'm trying to get across to people here in the neighborhood, when these projects present themselves to us, you have to apply yourself. It's a great day to be celebrating what I think is not only a magnificent structure, two magnificent structures actually, but structures that have had a major impact on this entire neighborhood. 66 buildings were demolished for creation of this campus and architectural components from some of those buildings were salvaged for reuse and integration into the fabric of the new police building. So again, uh, all my police brothers and sisters, whether you weren't a gun or not, law enforcement or, or non-sworn, just want to say every time I get an opportunity, I want to say thank you for what you do. Thank you for what you do. Much of Kansas City's drinking water infrastructure, the 2,800 miles of water main beneath our streets, is nearing the end of its useful life. Some of this pipe has been in use since the late 1800s. Aging infrastructure is a challenge every city across the country faces, and KC Water has a solution. So we started by pulling all of our water records, more than 20,000 individual water records, to glean as much information as we could about the pipes, when they were installed, the type of material used, uh, where it was installed within the right of, it, right of way, and we used that information to build a database. Engineers then built this hydraulic model of Kansas City's water distribution system and divided it up into more than 70,000 individual pipe segments. Each segment is analyzed to determine its probability and consequence of a failure. All of that information is charted on this heat map. The numbers in red are the miles of Maine with the highest risk. Those get replaced first. KC Water has a 1% water main replacement program, which translates into a goal of 28 miles of replaced pipe each year. One of those projects is here, near Meadow Lake Terrace in Mercer. Brooke Huddlemeyer is the project manager. Yes, they're currently installing six inch water main. There used to be a four inch through here. That four inch is still in service at the moment while they put in the new main. Larger pipe, 
means fewer anticipated water main breaks, increased reliability, and fewer service disruptions. No one likes to have their street torn up, and sometimes it may look like no work is getting done. But progress often happens out of sight and out of mind. This water main, um, none of the crews are here, cause it, and it looks like we're not doing any, doing anything. But currently, we are testing the water line. We have chlorine in it, um, and once the we get our bacteria tests back and show that we're clean and we have clean water, then we will begin tying in the water main at one of the ends, and then we will connect all the services. Eventually, all water mains in Kansas City will be replaced. A commonly asked question is, why are we jumping from block to block or from neighborhood to neighborhood and not doing an entire neighborhood all at once? And that goes back to that prioritization process. So if it looks like we're doing segment by segment and not whole neighborhoods, it is because we are only doing segment by segment. The water main replacement program started in 2012. In August of that year, there were 316 water main breaks. Many were because of the drought. Others could be blamed on the age of the pipe. In August of this year, there were 80 breaks, due in part to proactively replacing water mains. This is a strategic, long-term, 100-year investment by KC Water to deliver safe and reliable drinking water to today's customers and future generations. The ultimate goal is to stop interruptions to services. Um, we're trying to eliminate the breaks, eliminate the downtime that customers have to experience whenever there are breaks, um, and overall provide a better service to our customers. We believe that's the right plan for Kansas City, the right plan for our citizens, and how we can best serve our customers in a cost-effective way. Welcome everybody and uh, this is a great day obviously uh, anything we do in this part of the city in relationship to the, the Red Bridge uh, of course lock the bridge is a big part of what we're doing out here and you know I think back on what's happened and what's happened over the last several years and a lot of really important decisions were made um, at one time as you know traffic went over the old Red Bridge and there's a lot of conversation about should we build a new bridge that would cross both the air tracks and the river and uh, a lot of policy conversations, a lot of public input, and it happened. We've got a brand new bridge, and I know we were out here on a couple occasions to break ground, dedicate this great new red bridge, and all the interpretive plaques and all the uh, memories from our former community leaders that are on that bridge, and so that's a great victory. And then at one time, we quite frankly discussed, should we keep the old red bridge? And we had a bridge that was no longer going to carry traffic, and should we, I guess, cut it up and sell for scrap metal? Well. Policy decisions were made. I know Councilman Sharp was a big part of that, and uh, a decision was made to keep the Red Bridge. And no one's looked back on that decision right now. That was a great decision. I mean, it's a beautiful piece of our infrastructure, and of course, with Heidi's initiative and in putting the uh, Lock Your Love on those bridge rails, it's a signature component now of Southern Kansas City. Actually, a tourist attraction in and of itself, and continues to be a great place. So you have the victory of the new br bridge over the river and the tracks. You have the victory of the great new uh, saving of that red bridge. And then, of course, the trails. Well, thank you very much, Mark. I'd just like to thank the Park Department and particularly Mark McHenry and Richard Allen and, and Heidi Downer for all their work on this. Uh, mm -hmm. This is really a great thing for South Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And now we have almost seven miles of trail here on the Missouri side. And, of course, it, can, it connects to the trails in Kansas where you can walk from here to Olathe. So that, that's what we've been trying to do for many years because we've had a piece of trail here and a piece of trail there and we had to connect the dots. And now we're doing that. that. And uh, I am so glad that we were able to save the old Red Bridge. And Scott Taylor, my, my former colleague on the council before my term ended, was really a, a major champion for that because some people thought, well, let's just tear it down. And it was being undercut, you know, the bank underneath it was being undercut. We had to do some stabilization. But Scott really took the lead in saying, hey, we've got to save this. This is an iconic feature of South Kansas City. And of course, now it's, it's become a tourist attraction itself as the new bridge is, because a lot of people come here to, to read about the history of the trails, and, and we have memorialized on the bridge the pioneers and the Native Americans that, that really were part of this area 150 years ago. And 
it shows the diversity of the people too. It's not just a bunch of people who look like me. It shows the whole diversity uh, of everyone that was part of it, and I'm proud of that. Plus, it was a great safety factor because, as many of you know, the old uh, road was very windy. It was dangerous. We had wrecks on it. It got flooded, and the bridge itself was awfully shaky. I'd, I'd feel a little worried every time I drove over it. So now we have a safe, beautiful bridge. We saved the old bridge. This is a tourist attraction. We have more trails that people can walk on and, and enjoy our, our beautiful landscape. It's, uh, no, it's a great day to be out here. And uh, I think every time that these trails are extended, uh, there, there's people using the trails during construction. They'd be pouring concrete here and we'd have people biking around saying, hey, when are we gonna be finished? And so, with this completion is I think there's opportunities to connect to Grandview, to Martin City, and um, also you know connect to the trolley track trail. So we'll have connection down to the plaza, out to Grandview, out to Martin City. This is the three trails corridor that runs along Red Ridge that Lou Austin is part of. And so this is a huge piece of uh, trail that, that's been built and a good team was assembled and so uh, I want to thank everybody that participated in it and then as long as the federal transportation program keeps giving out uh, grant dollars, uh, we can keep building these trails. So, All right. thank you. All right. Yep. Okay. One, two, three. Yes! Don't forget that after the holidays, it's easy to dispose of your Christmas tree. Natural Christmas trees can be recycled at the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers. The first one is at 11660 North Main Street. There's another at 1815 North Choteau Trafficway. And out south, go to 10301 Raytown Road. The North Choteau and North Main sites are open Mondays through Saturdays from 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. The Raytown site is open on Saturdays only. Be sure to remove all lights, tinsel, and other decorations. Keep in mind there is a $5 tree recycling fee from Mondays through Fridays. However, it's free on Saturdays for Kansas City residents. Just bring your proof of residency. If you have Christmas lights that no longer work, you can also recycle those at locations throughout the city, including Walmarts. For a complete list of locations which accept lights, visit southeastenterprises.org. Due to the Christmas holiday, trash pickup on Friday, December 25th will be delayed until Saturday the 26th. Same goes for New Year's Day the following week. Also that week following Christmas is a no tag period for trash collection in the city. That means that the week of December 28th, residents may set out more than two bags of trash without buying those extra tags. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.